Good morning, YouTubers, and God bless you. Hope you're having a great day. And this is a sermon on the key to revival. It's short, so pull up a chair, open your Bible, and let's have a look at what God has to say. I was listening to a sermon on revival this morning, and I started thinking, which is always a dangerous pursuit with me, but anyway, I began to wonder what really brings revival. What causes people to go all out for God so that there is a multitude that nobody can count of Christians, of people who worship, people who love God and want to serve him? Uh, is it miracles? No, but they're part of a real revival. Well, is it Bible teaching? No, but that's part of a great revival. Is it prayer? No, but prayer is a gigantic part of revival. Is it worship? No, but worship is almost automatic in a true revival that God sends. Now, obviously, on God's side, it's always the Holy Spirit who comes to refresh and renew his people. But what about man's side? What is it on my side, the human side, that brings revival? Now, you know, God actually tells us, and it's both in the Old and New Testaments. But I'll quote a New Testament passage or two to show you what he says. And again, this has been working in my heart for a few months now. So it's relatively well formed, and I hope I can communicate it well to you. The key to revival is in Matthew in its opposite form, and in Revelation in its positive form. So Matthew the negative and Revelation the positive, and we'll go to Revelation last. In Matthew 13, 13 through 16, Jesus says this, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but you will not perceive. And here's the key, the negative key, the negative, that is, for the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. They won't listen, they won't see. Otherwise, they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. And then he says to his disciples, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. So that's the negative side. Closed eyes, closed ears, refusal to hear. Now here's the positive. And could it be that simple, that God just wants us to listen? And the answer is yes, because listening to God is the key to revival. Refusing to listen locks the door of revival and throws away the key. In Matthew chapter 13, many of the people who heard Jesus were amazed at the miracles. They hung on his preaching. He was fun to listen to, but they didn't actually listen in the sense of being willing to hear and respond. To them, Jesus was like Ezekiel. And here's what happened when Ezekiel prophesied. Ezekiel 33:32. God says to Ezekiel, You are very entertaining to them, like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice or plays fine music on an instrument. They hear what you say, but they don't act on it. So they went to the concert, but after it was over, nothing happened. And that's how many of the people of Jesus' day looked at him. They went to the concert, they listened to his teaching, they enjoyed his miracles, they appreciated what he was doing, but they didn't do anything about it. So then knowing this, what is the key to revival? And again, it's too simple. It's found in Revelation seven times. Revelation 2.7, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, and on and on down 
through the end of the messages to the seven churches. So what the Lord says is that listening is the key to revival. Listening to God is the key to revival. Simple, no? I imagine you think it's too simple. Isn't it prayer meetings, Bible study, spiritual reformation, good works? Yes, all those things are included in revival, but the key to revival is listening to God. Let me say that again. The key to revival is listening to God. He tells us so, both in his rebukes for not listening and in his call to hear him. Listen. Just listen. Ask God to speak to you, then listen. Keep asking, keep listening, don't stop. Of course, revival starts with number one. That's you. I could multiply passages, but here's one. And it's from Acts chapter 9, and it's about the conversion of Saul. It says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, that's just north of Jerusalem, so that if he found any who were of the way, that is Christians, whether men or women, he might bring them bound, that's for prison, to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven, and he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you're persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. Apparently the Lord had been pricking him like with cattle goads for a long time. So Paul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So the Lord made Paul listen. He forced Paul to hear. He wouldn't let him not listen. He knocked him to the ground and made him pay attention. And finally, Paul said, Lord, what do you want me to do? That was the key to Paul's personal revival. Now, you probably won't be forced to listen like Paul was, but God wants you to listen to him. He wants you to listen to him over the television, over the political messages that you hear, over your work, over your boss, over anything and everything, your children, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, doesn't matter who. He wants you to listen to him. And he's saying the same thing to you today as he said to the seven churches of Revelation in 95 AD. He who has ears to hear let him hear. Pay attention. Listen. When you do, revival starts in you. And then it spreads. God fills your life. And when you overflow, he fills others' lives through you. Now here is how to listen to God. And again, it's almost too simple. Just start listening. Then ask that you will hear what he says. When he does speak to you, and assuming that what he seems to say is not contradicted by scripture, do it. Do what God says. And when you do what God says, more information comes. When you do what God says, more blessing comes. When you do what God says, he opens doors for you. When you do what God says, he fills your life with his grace and with himself. So doing leads to him speaking to you more. Listening to what he says next and doing it leads to him working with you and in you fully. As you listen and do, he fills your life, and then your life overflows, and others catch the spirit of listening and doing and overflowing. It's like a flood, but a good one, that starts from multiple springs of water so that everyone around you gets what you've got, and that is the goal. I truly hope you do this, friends, and I truly hope you're blessed by this message and that you believe and hear the teaching that God has to say to you.